you know, the prison started off a long time ago as a camp, uh, had some federal roots and the state made it into a prison. It was a really important part of the um, state's prison system. And, you know, we had over a thousand prisoners there and hundreds of jobs for the Gogibbet County area. Um, it was a really big deal and a, and a good facility, had recent updates to um, water treatment and other things. But uh, the corrections department and decided that was the place to cut next. And it was very unfortunate and it was very abrupt and almost, in my opinion, somewhat sneaky how it all went down, but we weren't able to stop it. And uh, that community is still hurting from the loss of those jobs, the loss of that um, part of its community. And so I'm trying to do what I can out there to help bring back different jobs, bring back new opportunities for the area. And the sooner that facility can be sold to an interested buyer, the better. The folks within the community, um, economic development wise, have been shopping it around pretty much since day one. And there have been a number of uh, interested parties. Uh, several of different parties have contacted me more directly and have had some walkthroughs. There's been interesting, you know, uh, opportunities both in the manufacturing world and in the marijuana uh, growing opportunities. So, um, you know, as a state senator for the area, I, I'm most interested in giving the community the opportunity to see the development happen and allow them to take that into their hands. But as long as the state is standing in the way of the sale of that property, that was not going to happen. So the legislation was necessary to help expedite the sale of the property when the pr proper buyer comes along and to make sure that the state is not the holdup when, a, when an opportunity the community wants to use comes along. I mean, initially there was some real hope when I first got into office that we could force a change of mind. We had a new administration coming in, new governor, but um, I was very quickly realized that the new governor was not going to uh, walk back the previous administration's decision. She kept the uh, same department head that the previous governor had, and all of that hope kind of went away quickly, especially when they very quickly expedited the destruction of the wastewater treatment facility as well. And so all of those hopes of bringing back um, the facility in its proper role as a correctional facility um, were really um, dashed aside by this administration. So allowing the community the opportunity to sell it and develop it differently is the next best thing that we're able to work together to accomplish. And it's mainly at this point, you know, just a, a spot on the state's ledger book of, of expense, right? Because they have to continue to upkeep it to some degree they, and to manage it as the owner of the property. So at this point, it's all to the state's betterment to get it off of the books. So it, it hasn't been that hard to convince the administration to um, sign this legislation and, and let the community move on. Um, I think there's a lot of frustration from the administration that they weren't very receptive to the initial uh, pleas of the community to change course on this. And I think they just wanna walk away and wash their hands of the whole affair. You have, of course, your corrections officers and, and administrative staff, which was in the hundreds. Um, you've got the folks who are the support staff. Um, you've got educators and, and nurses, doctors, dentists, um, and then of folks running the wastewater treatment plant and your custodial work. So there's a lot of personnel that goes into running a large facility, taking care of 1200 prisoners and uh, bus drivers and those working the motor pool. So it was, it, they were a huge part of the community. They were the friends and neighbors there. They were the folks whose kids are going to the schools and people going to the restaurants and it made that community vibrant. It was a, huge blow to the west end of the Upper Peninsula to lose that facility. Um, and when it closed, I mean, you had families that broke apart. You had officers who went to different communities that bumped out folks there and created a big shuffle all over the state that impacted other people's families and schools and communities.
So the ripple effect was very real. And many of us still contend that uh, the department could have just as easily, easily chosen a different place that would have made less impact that, you know, whether it was, you know, especially downstate where they could have closed a facility that was next door to a facility and those workers would have just, you know, parked in a different parking lot, not uh, had to uproot their whole lives. You know, just my thanks to, you know, the, the various officials over there in Go Gibbet County and Marinesco who are continuing to work very hard for the citizens there to court new interests and new opportunities. We've, like I said, been over there and shown the facility off several times. And uh, certainly the state employees who are still there upkeeping the place have been very hospitable and welcoming when we've brought uh, potential buyers in. And uh, hopefully better times are ahead.